Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Let's lift our hands to the Lord this morning. Thank you, Lord, for washing over us, for cleansing us. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you for being an ever-present help in the time of trouble. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. That you send your angels as ministering spirits to the children of God. Hallelujah. They encamp about us, Lord, and go before us. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. No weapon formed against us can prosper. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. You are our defense, Lord. Hallelujah. Our strong tower. Hallelujah. Mighty God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Y'all may be seated. Praise the Lord. Praise God. So no service Wednesday night. Everybody got that? Praise the Lord. Amen. I want to thank uh, Roberto and the worship team for being here for this morning, but also for being here Friday night and helping with uh, uh, Tom's meeting and uh, being a blessing to him and, and to his uh, ministry. Praise the Lord. I appreciate that very much. And Mike was here laboring, amen, as usual, faithful, and I appreciate him so much, amen, for all he's doing. Amen. And uh, I want to thank again uh, Suzanne for opening this morning and doing double duty as she often does. And just grateful to her for being there for us. Amen. Great blessing as well. Praise the Lord. So, God is good. Amen. Yes. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Anybody have issues with judgmental people? Praise the Lord. You know, I, I can tell people are judgmental just by looking at them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> ah, hallelujah. Praise God. <laughs> hallelujah. <clears throat> Had a phone call from a <laughs> political party the other day. And... Uh, Want money. They're always wanting money. You know, I mean, that's what they do, and I get it. But uh, I just, I just said, you know, where, do you know where liars go? And it's kind of a pause on the other end of the line. I never answered, and I said, into politics. Yeah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Can I get an amen? Yeah. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Amen. I'm not saying they're all liars. I'm just saying, yeah. you, know, you know, we're getting all this stuff coming now because of the midterms that will be coming up. And it just, I get so sick of it. And I, one other thing I'd like to vent on this morning before I get spiritual. <laughs> we, got a, we watched uh, the opening of the U.S. Embassy in Jerusalem. But it was on a Christian network because it wasn't covered anywhere else. I mean, there were bits and pieces, but that was the only station that we could find that showed the whole thing. Uh -huh. Which, by the way, I'm very proud to be an American yeah. for that reason and that reason alone, if nothing else. Amen. I'm not saying that there aren't other reasons, but that, that blessed me. Praise the Lord. Yeah. And, uh, but yet, for the last weeks, we've heard nothing about this English prince that's getting married to an American. I am so sick of that. I don't care. I don't care who he married. I don't care if he gets married. I don't care. I don't care about it. We, didn't we fight a war for this? I mean, do we really need royalty to be stuffed down our throat like it's something really special? Can I get an amen? Praise the Lord. I mean, I don't hate England. I just don't care. Yeah. I don't want to, every time I turn on a TV, I'm looking at some Brit. Yeah. Praise the Lord. I'm an American for crying out loud. Yeah, exactly. 
I just think it was rude for him to have it so early in the morning. They should have waited until yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was it was uncomfortable getting up at yeah. three for that, I'm sure. Yeah, I mean like and they talk about it as if we really care. Yep. That's what I couldn't I'm think I'm thinking who are you talking to? <laughs> Sally said, How long is this gonna go on? And I said, As long as there's idiots watching it. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Come on, America, rise up! We don't need no stinking king. Hallelujah. We got <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. All right. I feel I feel better now. Praise the Lord. I'm just glad it's over. Praise God. What you're looking at here is something cleverly disguised as a responsible adult. Praise the Lord. I just kind of showed my true colors here this morning. Praise God. But anyhow, moving on. Thank God I'm an American. Praise the Lord. How I many you know faith works by love? Yes. Praise the Lord. I want to I want to talk to you about some things that, uh, and really it's kind of like what I was talking about last week. And I don't know how uh, how much you really pay attention to what I say, but I really only have one message. I just say it in a whole bunch of different ways. <laughs> Praise God. I've just you know I'm not really redundant. I'm. I'm uh, well, I like to think that I'm just, uh, I just talk faster than most people think. Praise the Lord. So, praise God. All right, John, chapter 15 and verse 12, Sheila. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Sheila, for being up there and flipping the pages of the Bible for us. Thank the Lord. Amen. This is my commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. And in fact, I talked, to, I don't know if it was last week, but at some point I, I mentioned this before. This is the only commandment in the new covenant. Yeah. That we love one another. We love God and we love one another. Amen. Yeah. All right. First John now, chapter four, verses seven through eight. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone that loveth is born of God, and knoweth God. Alright? Everybody that's born again loves one another, because love is of God. We have God in us. Amen. And everyone that loves is born of God, and knows God. Alright? He that loveth not knoweth not God, because God is love. Alright? Alright, now Revelation chapter 3 and verse 7. Thank the Lord. Amen. Last week we were talking about who's on the throne, you know. We are the temple. And uh, either the beast is ruling in our lives or God is ruling in our lives, depending on how we're responding to the situation and the circumstance. So we're not talking about a lot of times we look at this in the Old Testament or in the, in the book of Revelation especially and we think, okay, well, the beast is this horned thing or it's a monetary system or it's some other thing. And it is not. Look, the beast is either on the throne or he's not on the throne. If he's on the throne, Jesus is not on the throne. Amen. We have that old nature, that beast nature that wants to devour talks about biting one another and eat, chewing on one another and devouring, destroying each other. Mm -hmm. Amen. That's the beast nature. Mm -hmm. Amen. And so we have to continually renew our mind to the Word of God so that Christ is seated yes. on our throne. Yes. Amen. Leading us and guiding us. Amen. Amen. So, to the angel of the church in Philadelphia write, These things saith he that is holy, he that is true, he that hath the key of David, he that openeth and no man shutteth, and shutteth, and no man openeth. Okay? So to the angel of the church in Philadelphia, he says, I want you to write this. These things saith he that is holy, he that is true, he that is the key of David, he that openeth, and no man shutteth, and shutteth, and no man openeth. All right? Philadelphia the, is a Greek word. Actually, it comes from a Greek root. And it's philos is the first part of that, which means dear, or uh, i.e. friend, act fondly or friendly neighbor friend and Delphos the second half of that word Philadelphia where we get the word Philadelphia is Philos uh, Delphos is to love i.e. 
fraternal or brotherly love. Love like a brother. Amen? Hence, brotherly love. We call Philadelphia the city of brotherly love, which is kind of a, well, maybe, maybe not if you live in Philadelphia. But I'm saying that's where that comes from. So, this church, this brotherly love, this is the only church that Jesus speaks to. And you can go look through the book of Revelation. It's the only church in the book of Revelation that he has nothing against. Of all the churches that are listed there, he always has somewhat against them, something that they're not doing, something they are doing. The church in Philadelphia, this church of brotherly love, is the only one that he doesn't have anything against. And I think the main reason is they learned the greatest commandment. Love the Lord with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. Yeah. What this church learned, what it learned and what it learned early on, as they were developing into a, what, a, a congregation, you know, a church, is that everything flows from love. I said in the opening, faith worketh by love. Yes. Amen. So Revelation 3, let's look at this again. The angel, to the angel of the church in Philadelphia, write these things, saith he that is holy, he that is true, he that has the key of David, he that opens and no man shuts, shuts and no man opens. He's holy, he's true. The one that said to this church, our holiness is an emanation or an outflowing of the one who lives in us. It's not our holiness, it's His holiness. Amen? This church in Philadelphia, the one that Jesus had nothing against, has discovered this outward flow of the King's life within them. He's got the key of, the, of David. Amen? So they've, they've got a revelation. They understood that this life of the King was flowing out of them. The one who has the key of David. The key of David is the authority of a king. Yes. Jesus is a direct descendant from David, and he is the king of kings and the Lord of lords. But that, when he says key of David, he's talking to kingdom authority. Amen? Yes. Let, just look at this quickly in Isaiah chapter 22, verses 21 through 25. Isaiah 22, 21 through 25. Again, it's always about our identity and our recognizing who we are in Christ that everything flows from. If you think, you know, you're just a loser and nobody and nothing and, uh, you know, a sinner, uh, if that's your identity, if that's how you relate, that's probably how you're going to live. Yeah. You're always going to believe that God's not going to do anything for me because I'm too much of a screw-up. I, I just mess up too often. I, I'm not good enough. I'm not, I don't do all the right stuff. That's not how this works, praise the Lord. Our holiness is from Him. Exactly. It's not our works. Amen, of righteousness. But it's His works of righteousness that has made us righteous. That God has now declared us to be holy, righteous. Amen. So He says, I will clothe Him with Thy robe, strengthen Him with Thy girdle, and I will commit Thy government into His hand, and He shall be a father to the inhabitants. This is obviously Isaiah speaking prophetically. And the key of the house of David will I lay upon His shoulders. He's talking about Jesus. The key of the house of David will I lay upon His shoulders. So he shall open and none shall shut. He shall shut and none shall open. And that's where that scripture is coming from in Revelation that we just read. I will fasten him as a nail in a sure place. And he shall be for a glorious throne to his father's house. And they shall hang upon him all the glory of his father's house. The offspring and the issue. All vessels of small quantity from the vessels of cups even to the vessels of flagons. In that day saith the Lord of hosts. Shall the nail that is fastened in the sure place be removed and be cut down and fall. And the burden that was upon it shall be cut off for the Lord hath spoken it. Praise the Lord. So this is a picture, amen, of the person and the work of Jesus Christ. He is the king. He's the key. He's the door. Amen. The nail fastened in a sure place. Amen. He becomes the place where all of the burden, all of the pressure, all of the works hang. Praise God. Isaiah 53 and verse 8. See, we shouldn't live under any kind of pressure. He took it all. He took all the pressure. Praise the Lord. He was taken from prison and from judgment. 
And who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off out of the land of the living. Now I want you to remember this part because we're going to, at the, when I get to the end of this, I'm going to go back to a scripture that I used last week because God just keeps talking to me about it. But he was taken from prison and who shall declare his generation? That, that scripture is in, uh, in uh, um, Psalms 24. But he was taken from prison and judgment. Who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off out of the land of the living. For the transgression of my people was he stricken. Right? Not for his transgression. For our transgression. For the transgression of people. Praise the Lord. And the people that he's talking about are people that are birthed as a result of the king's love. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. 2 Peter 1 verse 4. Remember, we were born out of love. Yes. Praise God. We are heirs, descendants now, offspring of God. So he says, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises. These promises are given to us so that by these promises we might be partakers or receive the divine nature having escaped the corruption that's in the world through lust. Or through the flesh. Right. We have the nature of God. How? Because God birthed us. Yes. Yeah. That's what he's telling us. We are, the, we have that nature. The king's life. Yes. Amen. The king's actions now flow from us. Yes. Woo. That's, I feel the Holy Ghost. Praise the Lord. It's a life, amen, that flows from a resurrection that is not life as usual. It's a God kind of life. A God kind of life that lives inside of us as believers. And that's how Jesus expresses himself in this world. Isaiah 9, verses 6 and 7. How does he do it? Love. That's what we got. The world has what he calls lust. Wanting. Hunger for something. Anything. It's not just sex. We're talking about... Anything and everything. But he says, we don't have, we've escaped the corruption of that. Because we have been birthed with love. We have something the world does not have. They can say they have it. They can say, I love my new car. I love this, that outfit. You know, I love pizza. I love whatever. But it's not love. It's, it's something they just like. They desire. They want. We know love. Because we are of love. That's why they don't know God. Exactly. If you have not love, you know not God because God is love. Exactly. Are you with me? That's, how, that's why it's hard to communicate to people who aren't born again. Because exactly. you're talking, we're using the same words, but they have totally different meanings. Yes. Praise God. So for unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. The government shall be upon his shoulder. His name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. Upon the throne of David, remember the key, and upon his kingdom, to order it, to establish it with judgment, with justice, from henceforth even forever, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Yes. Praise the Lord. Yes. The gates of hell cannot prevail yes. against it. In fact, not only cannot, shall not right. prevail right. against yes. the revelation of Jesus Christ. Yes. Amen. Amen. Christ in you. Yeah. Yeah. That's the revelation we're looking for. Amen. Yes. It's not us doing the works, but it's God living and flowing. Yes. Praise the Lord. Jesus said the kingdom doesn't come with observation. And that word observation literally means observances. The kingdom doesn't come through things like keeping rituals. Amen. And prohibitions and rules. Are you with me? The kingdom comes by revelation, praise the Lord, by flowing through the people, amen, who are believers. Yes. See, the church is literally being built not on performance, not on a works-based religion, but on the power of the living Christ yes. to live his life out through us. That is love. Yes. Praise the Lord. Amen. And that's why the church has had such little influence outside of negativity. Right. Because we've made it all about the ritual. 
the observance, the yeah. this, the works, and all this. And that is not what the church is built on. If you read the Bible, you can see this. Amen? When the church is filled with brotherly love, faith works. Yes. Faith works by love. When the church is filled with love, faith will work. And it works through this love. It doesn't work through fear. Oh, see, he's telling us old forms of government. We just read Isaiah. The old forms of government are to go away. The old way of ruling over people is to go away. It's now time for the kingdom of God to rule. That is the government that Jesus brings, and it's on his shoulders. Amen? A new government is in charge. The Holy Spirit. Praise God. Yes. He has taken up residence in you. Yes. You are the governor's mansion. Yes. Yes. Praise God. Right. Hallelujah. The government is upon his shoulders. Yes. The body of Christ. Yes. He's the head. We're the body. The government rests on us. Yes. We are the governor's mansion. Praise the Lord. Yes. Yes. We are the place... That he rules from. Yep. Yes. You understand what I'm saying? Yep. It's from here that he gives his edicts. Yes. His, his word right. is established right. when it comes out of my mouth. Yes. Amen. When I agree. Amen. That's who we are. Yes. How little do we really understand right. of this? Because we've, ma we've made it all about exactly. don't do this and don't do that and don't do that. Instead of the reality of what God's trying to get across to us. Who we are. Yes. What authority we have. Yes. And why we have it. Yes. John 1 verse 17. See it frees us. This, he came to set us free. This is, he did everything. He did all the work. It's ours. It's freely given to us. Now freely give it to somebody else. Yes. For the law was given by Moses... But grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Amen. John 1.29. The next day John sees Jesus coming unto him and said, Behold the Lamb of God which takes away the sin of the world. Okay, so Jesus came so that we would have a door. So that we would have access. So we'd have a key to open the door. Amen. Into the kingdom of God. Yes. Amen. Not based on human labor. Not based on our performance. Right. It's based on the door that he is. Amen. Yes. And the key that he has given to us. Amen. In a revelation of himself. Yes. This is the revelation of the present reigning of Jesus Christ in us. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Not in some future no. situation. Not in some past uh, you know, era. But today. Now, today is the day of salvation. Today is the day that Christ reigns and rules in this earth. And he does it through his people. Praise God. Hallelujah. Love. Praise the Lord. Revelation 3, verse 11. Behold, I come quickly. Hold that fast which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. That's really interesting to me. But in the context of what we're talking about. Because that's the context he's speaking of. Jesus, King Jesus, is ruling and reigning in you. He's made us heirs. He's made us joint heirs. He's our older brother. Amen. Amen. You have the right to reign with him in life. He has made us kings and priests yes. to our God. Yes. Hallelujah. Romans 5 verse 17. Because of him we rule, we reign in this life. Yes. This life. Here. For by one man's offense death reigned by one. Much more they which receive abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness shall reign in life. By one, yes. Jesus Christ. Yes. Hallelujah. As children of the King, we have crowns. Yes, we do. Don't let anybody deceive you. 
and cause you to lose your crown. I don't care about no stinking prince in, in England. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Sorry, Philip, or whatever your name is. I really don't have any animosity to the guy. I'm just saying, I don't care. I got a crown. It's far more valuable than whatever his is worth. Praise the Lord. Because it's an eternal crown. And I'm not letting somebody take it, amen, by just robbing me of my identity and telling me I'm something that I'm not when I know what I am. And because I know what I am, I know who I am. And because I know who I am, I have a crown. And that crown gives me the authority to operate as a king, amen, in this world. To reign in life by one Jesus Christ, my older brother. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Operate the, in the kingdom authority, yes. binding and loosing, shutting and nobody can open, yes. opening that nobody can shut, praise the Lord. You don't have to wait to rule, praise God. You don't have to wait for a thousand year millennium to rule and reign with Christ, amen. God extended his name into this earth so that he could operate through us, praise the Lord, who bear his name. Yes. He's our daddy, yes. praise the Lord. Amen. Praise God. We're supposed to be operating kingdom business in the earth. It's God and sons. And he's opened a branch office. And it's right here in the earth. And we are to run it. We've been given dominion. We've been given authority. And we've let people and religion steal our crown, amen, rob us of our identity and let our flesh dictate who we are and, and determine who and what we are. Yes. When it's the Spirit of God that was born again in us that gives us a right, hallelujah, and authority and a dominion to rule in life and to reign in this world. Praise God. Woo, that ought to get you excited. Praise the Lord. Uh, nearly 40 years ago now, uh, God gave me Isaiah 54. I remember the chapter. And I could, I, 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 for, for all this time now, I, I read it at least once a week and I try to figure out exactly what he's saying. And I'm getting, I get bits and pieces. But let me show you something that God has shown me here just recently. Look at Isaiah 54, verse 1, if you will, Sheila. Sing, O barren, thou that didst not bear. Break forth into singing. Cry aloud, thou that didst not travail with child. For more are the children of the desolate than the children of the married wife, saith the Lord. All right? Remember Galatians uh, 4? Let's go to there. Galatians 4, verses uh, 22 through 28. For it is written that Abraham had two sons, one by a bondmaid, the other by a free woman. But he who was of the bondwoman was born after the flesh. But he of the free woman was by promise. Which things are an allegory? For these are the two covenants, the one from Mount Sinai which gendereth to bondage, which is Agar. For Agar is Mount Sinai in Arabia, and answereth to Jerusalem, which now is, and is in bondage with her children. But Jerusalem, which is above, is free, which is the mother of us all. For it is written, Rejoice, thou barren, that bearest not. Break forth and cry, thou that travailest not, for the desolate hath many more children than she which hath a husband. Now we, brethren, as Isaac was, are the children of promise. Abraham had two sons. One came from a natural seed, produced, amen, in, in human strength and ability, amen. And one came from God. God said, that one that was born naturally, that's not my son. That's not my child. That's not my heir. The true son was to be by supernatural birth. Love. Praise the Lord. Galatians 3, verse 29. So this is what God's speaking to me about. Amen. This is the true church. You can make stuff happen. You can give enough rules and regulations to control people to a certain extent. God does honor. He doesn't recognize it. He honors, he honors 
and recognizes the ones that come by promise. Not by their own ability, not by their own behavior, but by the righteousness of God. By receiving their identity from Him. Praise the Lord. If you be Christ, then are you Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Praise the Lord. Abraham, praise the Lord. So there's a seed of God. Amen. A true Jerusalem, which is free. Yes. See, the, the free Jerusalem is not a place. It's a people. So the comparison goes in the scripture to the church in Philadelphia. Love, right? Go back to Revelation 3, verses 12 and 13. Revelation 3, verses 12 and 13. Him that overcometh will I make a pillar in the temple of my God. And he shall go no more out, and I will write upon him the name of my God, the name of the city of my God. Now, before, I'm, before I go any further, let me, I, I preached on this whole idea of allegorical teaching and stuff in the past. But again, I want to just emphasize, everything we read in this Bible is either an allegory, it's a, par a parable, it's a type, or it's a shadow, or it's a fulfillment of that. Then we come to the book of Revelation, and immediately we want to make it literal. And that's why we get so screwed up when we get to the book of Revelation, when the Revelation, it, the book of Revelation is only a completion or a total view of Jesus, which is what everything else in the other 65 books of the Bible is doing, is giving us a revelation of Jesus. You just don't see it a lot of times because it's a, it's a metaphor, it's an allegory, it's a, it's a type, it's a shadow. So he's using the same way to teach. Why would he change it when he gets to the last book of the Bible? No, he brings all of these metaphors, all of these allegories, all of these uh, spiritual teachings out to show us exactly what he's been telling us for the last 65 books. Yeah. Instead, we try to make it a totally different interpretation, and that's why it looks like something totally nuts. All right. So he said, Him that overcometh will I make a pillar in the temple of my God. He shall go no more out, and I will write upon him the name of my God, the name of the city of my God, which is New Jerusalem, which cometh down out of heaven from my God, and I will write upon him my new name. I'm going to read it again. Him that overcometh will I make a pillar in the temple of my God. He shall go no more out. I will write upon him the name of my God and the name of the city of my God, which is New Jerusalem, which cometh down out of heaven from my God, and I will write upon him my new name, he that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith to the churches. Praise the Lord. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. Hear what the Spirit is saying. Amen. We are not the synagogue of Satan, which it refers to in another scripture here in the book of Revelation. We are the temple of our God. Yes. Praise the Lord. We're believers. We've been born again. Right. So look, and when you look at this, there are three words that describe the city of God. Amen. Revelation 21, uh, verses 2 through 7. Revelation 21, verses 2 through, two through 7. So there's three words that are describing the city of God. I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned by her husband. I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. Now I'm going to read this once more. I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. There shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. He that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. And he said unto me, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. 
He that overcometh shall inherit all things. I will be his God, and he shall be my son. Amen. Praise the Lord. So three icons are used here to describe the same people. City, bride, and tabernacle. Yes. Amen. Praise the Lord. A bride is not a place. It's the people in the new covenant. Yes. Amen. Mm. Tabernacle of God in the new covenant isn't a building. It's people. Yes. Know ye not, you are the temple of God. God shall tabernacle with them. Amen. Yes. New Jerusalem is not a place. It's those who have the nature of God and the name of the city of their God written upon them. That's what he just told us. Yes. Praise the Lord. The same people in Revelation 21 are coming out of the invisible realm. This city coming down out of heaven. Hallelujah. Amen. Which is a people, not a city, not a location. Hallelujah. And it's, it's these people are coming down, amen, out of the invisible realm into the visible realm, into manifestation. They are from above and not beneath. You have been born from above. Hallelujah. You are a child of God. Praise God. Behold, I make all things new. When you were born again, you were born from above. Praise the Lord. You were born from above. You became a new creature in Christ. Hallelujah. Old things passed away. All things became new. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Can you, can you dig it? Praise the Lord. That's what he's saying. Hallelujah. All right. Look at Revelation 21 and verse 14. The wall of the city had 12 foundations, and in them the names of the 12 apostles of the Lamb. Remember, we're still, we're talking what he's been saying for 65 books here. Yes. Now compare that with Ephesians chapter 2, verses 19 through 22. Ephesians 2, 19 through 22. So the wall had 12 foundations, and the names of the apostles and the prophets. So, so therefore... Ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God, and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone, in whom all the building fitly framed together groweth unto a holy temple in the Lord, in whom ye also are builded together for a habitation of God through the Spirit. Praise the Lord. It's suggesting to us in pretty powerful terms not to look for a physical building. Amen. But instead for a church that has been built upon the apostolic and prophetic truth and foundation. Hallelujah. Jesus holds it all together. Praise God. Now, here's the thing. When we recognize who we are, the building will be complete. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And every time, look for yourself, every time in the scripture when the temple or tabernacle was completed, God filled it with his glory. Yes. Amen. We try to make the glory show up. The glory shows up automatically when the temple is finished. When we know, Jesus said it's finished. It's just a question of us getting a revelation of it. Of us actually knowing it and living from that reality. Praise God. I was thinking of this old song when I was a teenager. Maybe even before I was a teenager. I can't remember now. But it was called The Chapel of Love. I can't remember the singers. But all of y'all somewhere close to my age remember it. Going to the chapel and I'm going to get married. Go to the chapel of love. Hallelujah. Yeah. Amen. Well, we are the temple of love. Hallelujah. We are love gods. <laughs> Praise the Lord. That makes me a little uncomfortable, but it's true. Praise the Lord. God is love. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We are the habitation of God. Look at Hebrews 12, verses 22 through 24. Hebrews 12, 22 through 24. 
Dr. Love. Praise the Lord. <laughs> oh, that's so awkward. But ye are come unto Mount Zion, and unto the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to an innumerable company of angels, to the general assembly and church of the firstborn, which are written in heaven, and to the God, the judge of all, and to the spirits of just men, <coughs> excuse me, made perfect, and to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, and to the blood of sprinkling, that speaketh better things than that of Abel. Praise the Lord. We are the habitation of God. Yes. We are New Jerusalem. Yes. We are the bride of Christ. Yes. Show us your glory. Praise the Lord. Yes. Amen. All right. Now, let me, I'm going to go back to Psalms 24 that I spoke of at the beginning. And if you were here last week, you remember that it's kind of coming from the same place. But let's go to Psalms 24. And I want to read verses 1 through 5 first, Sheila. I'm going to do the whole thing eventually, but just beginning with 1 through 5. Psalms 24. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world they that dwell therein. For he hath founded it upon the seas and established it upon the floods. Who shall ascend unto the hill of the Lord? Now, remember, this is David writing, and we know David was pretty flawed. So he's asking a question, and I think it's actually a rhetorical question, because he had revelation of Jesus, uh, of the grace of God. Amen? Because that's how he went in and ate the shoe bread and wasn't freaked out about it. He knew it was representing the bread of life and so forth. So uh, the fullness thereof, that's why God said he's a man after my own heart, even though he was a total screw up like most of us. There, there are the world, and they that dwell therein. For he hath founded it upon the seas and established it upon the floods. Who shall ascend unto the hill of the Lord? Who shall stand in his holy place? Who can come to God? Who can be in the same place with God? Right? He that has clean hands and a pure heart, who has not lifted up his soul unto vanity, nor sworn deceitfully. He shall receive the blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. Who gets this? The guy that's perfect. Right? The righteous. Of just men made perfect. That's us. He's talking about. Praise the Lord. All right, now verses 6 through 10. This is the generation of them that seek him. That seek His face. Where are we seeking Him? We don't, we're not praying for Him to come down from above. Or for Him to come up from beneath the sea. He's here. He's in us. We seek Him right here. Yes. We're looking everywhere. And He's right here. That's where He, that's where he is revealed. Yes. Lift up your heads. O ye gates, and be ye lift up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. We just discovered who the temple is, and that's what he's referring to here. The gates of the temple, the doors of the temple. He's talking about us. This generation. Yes. Lift up your heads, O ye gates. You temple, lift up your head. Amen. And, and, and ye gates, and be ye lift up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. When you recognize who you are, and lift up your gates, hallelujah, and open the doors... The King of Glory comes in. Praise God. Yes. Everlasting God. Who is this King of Glory? The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O ye gates. Even lift them up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of Glory shall come in. Yes. Who is the King of Glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the King of Glory. Think about that. That's what Selah means. Think about it. Praise the Lord. You are the gates. You are the doors. You are the temple. You and I. Yes. And the glory fills the completed temple. Yes. Yes. Oh, this is the generation to lift up Amen. your gates. Uh -huh. Praise the Lord. Uh -huh. And this King of glory. Who is the King of glory? Christ in you. The hope of glory. Yes. He's in you. And that hope is fulfilled when we recognize it, when we realize who we are. We are this by grace, by His goodness, by His faith. Amen. And all we have to do is love. And He shows up every time. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I, I don't have to argue with people to get them to believe my theology. If they don't want to believe it, then just go to hell. 
I mean, you know what I'm saying. I'm not saying because they don't agree with me, they're going to hell. I'm saying they're going to have hell right here. And we all know it because in this world you will have tribulation. But be of good cheer, somebody overcame the tribulation. And if you know who that someone is, you overcome tribulation. Hallelujah. Give him a hand clap this morning. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Now you can see why I don't care about watching some prince in England get married. I'm married to the King of Kings yes. and the Lord of Lords. Hallelujah. I got some authority. I got a crown. I got some stuff. That all that millions that they spent is like a drop in the bucket. It's like a nothing in comparison to what my father has. And whatever he has, he says, is mine. There's no limit. There's no lack. Only abundance. And that's true of every one of us. Yes. We are children of the King. Yes. Hallelujah. Lift up your heads, O ye gates. Yes. And the King of glory is coming in. Amen. Praise God. Give him one more hand clap. Yes. Praise, God. Yes. Praise God. Amen. God bless you all. You are dismissed in Jesus' name. Have a great week. Praise God. See you back here Sunday.